Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Tomb Raider Underworld. Now, uh, first things first, I had to restart this recording because of a very silly mistake on my part. I basically recorded the first episode already, and I forgot to attach my microphone correctly, so my audio was audible, but quite quiet, quite quiet. Um, so I decided to re-record it. Also, you know, as is typical for first episodes of my Let's Plays, um, I did a lot of talking, and I'm going to do a lot of talking in this re-recording, I know, right, um, but I'm going to do part of that while this uh, cutscene here starts playing. It's a little bit of a, well, a teaser, as we'll see. Um, there's, there's no text, I think, so it should be fine. Um, anyway, yeah, this is Tomb Raider Underworld, the third of the games, of the kind of reboot of the series, or uh, reinterpretation of the series developed by Crystal Dynamics. Uh, I played the first of these, Tomb Raider Legend, off-camera, just on my own, and then I decided to play the second one, which is a remake of the original one, uh, on my channel, so you might have seen that, Tomb Raider Anniversary. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, quite a bit more than Legend, actually. And now this is the sequel to Legend, so... Um, hopefully it's, it'll make enough sense, even if you haven't seen the previous game. Well, Legend, not Anniversary. Uh, so yeah, that's, this is going to continue the, the storyline from that game directly. However, um, we will watch a, uh, a bit of a recap of the events of the first game in a little bit, and I'm also going to try and quickly retell the main events, because honestly that video doesn't really make a ton of sense, probably, if you haven't seen the game yourself. But, uh, yeah, and this is completely blind for me, so I've, I mean, other than having already recorded the first episode and having seen that part of the game, um, I had never seen the game before, like, at all. With both Legend and Anniversary, I must have seen speedruns, I think, probably speedruns, I watched a ton of speedruns, um, for both of those games at some point, but I couldn't really remember any details, as you might have seen. So, as you probably noticed if you watched my anniversary playthrough. So, um, yeah, but this one I'm pretty sure I've never seen at all. Um, and yeah, this is the main menu that the game just dumps you into as soon as you boot it up. No title screen or no game title to be seen anywhere, except if you let that little scene play out. Anyway, uh, well, what is there to say? Right, uh, I guess we're just going to watch this um, previously video. Which is not going to really... It's probably going to leave you with more answers than questions. No, wait. That would be good. No, with more questions than answers, if you're not familiar with Legend. But, uh, again, I'm going to try and retell the events, the major events, uh, to the best of my recollection. You never have to be cold, my Lara, if you don't want to be. No, get back! What's happening, Mother? Lord, what is it? Oh, God! Right. Yeah, so this is basically the, the intro scene Mother. from Legend, Mother. where little Lara visited uh, some ancient ruin with her mother, not really sure why, and she touched some ancient mechanism, which resulted in her mother disappearing into a portal of some sort, with a demonic voice speaking to her. Right, then years later, Lara was uh, exploring this ruin with her colleague, her, like, student friend, Amanda. They found this this artifact thing, this necklace or whatever. Um, the rune uh, started to crumble. There was some kind of ancient demon set free uh, that killed all their friends. And uh, eventually they, well, the, the rune was crumbling and, and filling with water and they were just getting out of it, when uh, Amanda got trapped uh, under a rock, um, and they were both uh, about to drown. Lara was trying to help her, but she couldn't. There was some kind of gate in the way. So she stayed as long as she could, but ultimately she had to leave Amanda behind, and obviously uh, presumed her dead. But uh, yeah, years later she turned up again when Lara son somehow found a trace of, those, of that weird sword thing that she touched there, that you saw, that was uh, the key to that portal mechanism. So she found a, that trace and kind of started uh, looking for 
for the for that thing and what it might uh, what what that might be, what that mechanism might be. And uh, it turned out there were like multiple of those swords and multiple of those ruins across the world, maybe. And it all had to do with uh, the Arthurian legend somehow. Um, it was all yeah, a little bit all over the place. And um, yeah, so basically she was hoping to maybe find out something about her mother's fate. Who's, who she somehow believed might not be dead, despite, you know, uh, better knowledge, basically. And then somehow Amanda turned up again. Uh, she wasn't dead. She somehow made it out of that ruin after all. And she was uh, very angry at Lara for leaving her behind, even though Lara obviously had no other choice back then. And yeah, Amanda had uh, made it out there, kept that weird amulet thing, and somehow learn to control that demon thing that was set free back then, all those years ago, and was, I don't know, trying to uh, use those portal things herself, or I don't know really what she was trying to do, just take revenge on Lara? I don't know. She didn't really seem to be too interested in Lara at all. It was by complete coincidence that Lara learned about her still being alive. It's not like Amanda sought her, sought her out herself. Anyway, whatever. In the end, there was that uh, final confrontation where Lara fought that demon thing and confronted Amanda and well as you saw she demanded to know what happened to her mother and Amanda knew apparently that her mother that Lara's mother was still alive and in a place called Avedon which you know might or might not have much to do with the, the mythical Avedon of Celtic folklore anyway that's basically where we are that's kind of the, the first game just ended there uh, it had felt very much like uh, you know the story was only just beginning, and here's thankfully the the continuation. So I'm gonna play on Tomb Raider difficulty. I guess that's should be good enough. Uh, the game's kind of loud, actually. Hmm. I hope it's it's just this dramatic intro music. Yeah. Anyway, we continue right where we left off. Um. Obviously. Yeah, we saw Lara. Uh, press that button, apparently triggering the explosion of her own mansion of Croft Manor. And not only that, but... Well, okay, first of all, the game outright tells us that uh, we should go to the main menu and watch that video we just watched. If we didn't, or if we're not familiar with the previous game. But yeah, again, it's... I think it's probably more confusing than anything else if you are not actually familiar with the game already. Right, and then we just get done here. So, first she blows up her own manor, and now she enters it, enters the burning, crumbling catacombs underneath it, somehow, for some reason. Well, we'll see. As I said, this is a re-recording, so I've already done this, familiarized myself with the controls, which are mostly the same as uh, in in uh, Anniversary. Uh, we can roll, and we can crawl, and we can jump, and we can uh, grapple hook, we can target and grapple a specific spot, which is nice. Uh, we have weapons, pistols, and a uh, sort of shotgun. And it looks like we don't have... All oh, right, ammo just refills. Yeah, we don't have limited ammo here, just a limited magazine that we'll have to reload at some point. It's pretty generous. Uh, we have this flashlight thingy. Um, right, and we have this... Uh, apparently it's some sort of camcorder, but mostly it's, it seems to be used as a binoculars, basically. Which is kind of neat. Uh, they seem to have uh, done away with that uh, weird analysis tool thing from... Oh, right, we have to activ activate this here. Uh, from Legend. There was that thing, basically a combination of binoculars with some sort of uh, yeah computer that analyzed the image that you saw, which never was really necessary to use. Okay. So yeah, um, it's definitely a good idea to get rid of that. I think. Uh, what else? Right, she, she can now, or once again, use melee attacks. I think that was a thing in. Oh, hi there, health kit. Um, yeah, that was a thing in Legend as well. Obviously not an anniversary. But yeah. Um, 
that's mostly it. We uh, can still do most of the same things movement-wise. Can push blocks, of course. Obviously, a staple of the series. Yeah, they still move in this same way where you can turn them. Not confined to a grid as in the old games. There are. Um, can you please? Okay. <laughs> There are a few new movement options, as we'll see. Uh, I think we just jump sideways here? Yeah. Okay. Alright. Floor collapses. We jump across and awkwardly grab that ledge. And actually made it to the main hall here. Yep. It's that place. That wasn't there in Tomb Raider Anniversary, but it was in Legend. Oh, this is incredibly awkward. Ouch. Whoops. Thankfully, this uh, sequence here is going to be over soon. This door cannot be opened now. Right. Press B to safely drop down. I mean, I guess you crawl, basically try crawling off a ledge and that will ensure that you grab it. Right, and there's uh, the buffer, Winston, is that his name? And this guy, his name is uh, Zip, I think. Who used to be her friend or colleague or something. The guy who, who was sitting in her manor in, by those computers that we saw, uh, basically communicating with her via radio as she was out on an adventure. Oh, one week earlier. Wow. Okay, I have missed that one, um, exactly how long ago this was. But yeah, so this was before she blew up her own manor and her own former friend turned against her. Probably because he had to assume that she had turned against him hey, Lara. at first. Find it yet? Patient Zip, I warned you that conveniently undiscovered islands would be scarce in the Mediterranean. <laughs> yes. Are you sure this Eddington chap knows what he's talking about? If he says father was convinced the path to Avalon was here, also, I have no clearly a real photograph there. Fair enough. But it's well, we've been talking. You've been talking, man. Yeah, it's just hmm, he's already grumpy somehow? Maybe Avalon is real, but just because some bad woman tells you your your mother didn't die after all. I mean, look, I, I don't want to seem heartless, but this, this idea of your mom living in some, some Celtic underworld, it's a, it's a little bit mental, isn't it? Yeah, I have I mean, no illusions that my mother is holding court in some mythical paradise, Alistair. I only want the truth, whatever it may be. I'll win you later. I only want the truth, even if it's something that's literally impossible and, you know, only explainable by magic, basically. And this is where we actually start the game for real. So this is the direct continuation, obviously. Uh, the game ended with, well, Amanda telling Lara that her mother is still alive in Avalon, and apparently she's been looking for a way to actually go there, which makes sense. You know insofar as that makes any sense at all, but sure. Right. Unfortunately, we cannot do anything in here. In fact, there is just a, an invisible wall here. Sure. Okay, fine. Whatever. And, you know, in my original recording, I said, well, great, this, this game starts out with my favorite part of the game, or, you know, the series, diving. But thankfully, she has this little, I don't know, rebreather. It's really too small to, to actually be bottles of, of oxygen, but whatever. Whatever it is, it allows her to stay underwater indefinitely, so why don't we dive in, literally. Controls are still the same, and I gotta say, this game is quite pretty. I think it's actually a pretty decent step up from, from even Anniversary, which I already thought was pretty good looking, but yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty. So, we can dive down here, we don't have to worry about oxygen at all. Uh, we can shoot at enemies, in fact, they're should be some sharks around, but they haven't really been attacking me at all, so I'm, I'm kind of ignore them so long as they ignore me. Well, so much for that. Okay, so previously, these sharks just completely left me alone, and I was totally okay with leaving them alone and turn. Oh god, okay. But yeah, not only are there underwater weapons, but you can also dodge underwater. So. Yeah, weird. They were completely non-aggressive when I first recorded, so... Oh. There's 
there's that. Yeah, anyway. I mean, look at this. This is just... It looks gorgeous, doesn't it? It's, uh... I don't know. Maybe I have low standards, but... For a 2008 game? I don't know. I wasn't expecting, expecting it to look this good. Now, well, originally, obviously, I spent a lot more time also. Hello, jellyfish. Not a fan of jellyfish in real life, but, uh... Yeah. That's okay. Um, yeah, originally I spent a lot more time just looking around here. Now, of course, I know what to look for and where to go. So, ouch. So there isn't anything useful or necessary in this ruin, which is a little bit hidden. You know, the entrance was kind of covered by a little bit of seaweed. Oh, interesting. Oh, well, that's interesting. Even though I started a new game, the artifacts are still collected. Okay, so there, there used to be an artifact here. I mean, I'm going to still go to the same places where I... At least where I remember artifacts being. Just in case anyone wants to use this as a guide for some re weird reason. Um, wants to follow my playthrough somehow. Um, once again, I'm not really guaranteeing that I'm going to 100% this game, especially since... Uh, well, I should probably show that. Uh, wait. Oh, wrong button. There we go. Um, area info. Treasures. Okay, I, wow, six? Really? I didn't think I found that many, but yeah, uh, 6 out of 26 treasures. So those things are everywhere. There is a ton of them. Um, also, levels might be huge. I did not finish this first level, obviously, um, in the first in that first video that I uh, scrapped. So yeah, they're basically everywhere. Or, I mean, they're, the levels are probably quite big, and there are also a lot of treasures, is the thing. And I'm definitely not promising that I'm going to find all of them. Especially not on my first blind playthrough. I might go back to previously visited areas if I feel completionist enough, but well, we'll see. I'm definitely going to try and get all the relics at least, all the treasures. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, there there are a ton of them, for sure. Uh, we have this weird sonar map. That's right. I never used that in in this area here. Controls are a bit weird, but hmm. okay. I mean, I guess uh, it helps a little bit. The area isn't huge, I must say. I know that there's another entrance, but it's hard to spot even on the sonar map. And really only seems to show a certain area around you and not necessarily places that you've been to before. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how useful that's gonna be. Field assistance. I need to explore these ruins to find a way inside. Yeah, no kidding. Any place I see glowing jellyfish means there's oh. an interior space to explore. Okay, that's very explicit. Glowing jellyfish, you say. I mean, you really don't see glowing jellyfish... Uh, well, okay, you see them there, but... Hmm, yeah. I don't know, I only found these two side entrances and, and then the one main entrance there. So, if there's anything else hidden out here, like more artifacts just out on the seafloor, then I didn't find them, and... I really hope they didn't... Oh, I did not find this one before. Good thing uh, I decided to check over here. These things are kind of... Not super obvious. They're definitely not as glowy as the secrets were in... Uh, in Anniversary. So, yeah. Also, good thing I picked that up first, because, uh, yeah, as it turns out, when you pick up this thing here, this key item, um, you can't put it down until you bring it where it belongs. And you can't pick up any any artifacts or anything while you're carrying it. So... What, what was that? Oh, weird. I'm pressing the, the aim button, basically. The aim at enemies button, and that makes her freak out completely while she's carrying this. Oh, oh, you can drop it by shooting. Well, it's good to know. Huh. Okay. Good to know. I suppose it's kind of necessary if you actually run into enemies while holding it. Okay, well, we'll see if more similar situations are going to come up in the future. Anyway, this is where we're supposed to bring it. Um, there's obviously this mechanism here with uh, one of these wheels already in place. And here we'll put in this one, and then there's one right there. I don't remember if there was an, an artifact in this room, too. I don't think there was. Anyway, we put this in, and... Yeah, the solution involves... Well, there are some of these... There are two different tiles, basically, right? There are the, the lines and the, the circle things. And there's only three circle things and 
the idea is to uh, get them all. Yeah, it's actually super easy to get them all onto this middle circle here, this middle disk. So all you need to do is turn that once, turn this once, and then you turn this twice, and that's that. So it did not take me much longer than this to figure out originally, so yeah, it's pretty straightforward. But pretty impressive and pretty looking nonetheless. Not too shabby for an, some sort of ancient civilization, whoever ex actually built this. Right, and here's where the game tells me to sprint underwater. Quite convenient. Definitely a lot better than just mashing the use button in Anniversary. I hope I'm not missing any more artifacts here, but I don't know. I looked around a little bit and didn't see any hidden tunnels. Oh, that being said, this looks kind of suspicious, but it doesn't actually lead anywhere, so... I don't know, there might be things hiding. Also, hi there, giant tentacle. That's right, I forgot about that one. Yeah, okay. That's not ominous at all. That's surface here. Pretty. Yeah, again, I, this game really looks good. Surprisingly so. Um, unfortunately, these are not ledges you can grab. I tried. Uh, doesn't, certainly doesn't seem like you can explore this room at all. Even though it looks like there might be climbing opportunities, but I guess there really aren't. Oh, right. But we have ancient urns we can kick and destroy. And unfortunately, if you want to find all the artifacts, because one of these uh, did contain one originally, yeah, you have to vandalize them. So much for, uh, you know... It, it belongs in a museum and all that. Can you please just climb up? Thank you. Ah, yes. Awkward controls and, you know, the game misinterpreting what I want to do. That's obviously part of what the series is all about. Um, yeah. Here we have the next room. Once again, can't just climb those ledges, so we'll have to find a way around. Uh, there was another artifact down here, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure it was just lying here. Yeah. It's really weird and, I don't know, kind of unfortunate that that got reset even though I specifically started a new game from the menu. I mean, it's fine. I didn't make it that far into the game, obviously. Right, and also, this thing is not a relic or an artifact, but it's a health kit. I mean, obviously. Oops. Yeah, now we have one. I guess the one from the from that intro level didn't carry over somehow. But yeah, my theory is that every level is going to have its own visual variation for health kits. In this case, it's some kind of ancient goblet filled with red liquid because, you know, that makes sense, I guess. Yeah, anyway, we can climb up here. I think there might have been another artifact in here, too. Not sure. Um, over that way is actually just an alternate way to uh, to get up here somehow. It uh, seems to serve no other purpose. So the way forward is actually this way. Jump backward. Oh right, actually. Oh, interesting. So yeah, you can now finally climb onto these things. Which is really cool and you can hang from them and you can s turn around pretty quickly, a lot more quickly than used to be the case. Yeah. And we can do this. Pretty cool. So that's one of the new moves. Wow, holy crap, that looked uh, daring. Right, and here we can just drop down, and that brings us to this ledge that we couldn't have reached otherwise. Right. Okay, let's see what this does, actually. I never tried pulling this lever. Okay. Right. So obviously we'll have to do something, and these are obviously pressure plates. I mean, we've played Tomb Raider games before, right? Now... We grapple that, and we pull, and that weighs down that pressure plate, and this one we'll have to weigh down with these things. Oh 
Okay, still freak out a little bit. Uh, yeah, so originally I did not have uh, V-Sync enabled, and apparently that is a problem because um, the game kind of ran at like 150 FPS or so um, without V-Sync on, and these things just, as soon as I dropped them, they slid all over the floor. Also, um, some other weird things happened that I'm not sure are going to be fixed now. I'm actually interested in that. I wondered how many of the problems. Also, the camera really freaking out when it, whenever it got close to a wall. Like, this looks normal, but uh, it really freaked out majorly in, in some situations. So we'll see if those things still happen. My theory was that maybe all of those weird glitchy behaviors were caused by the frame rate being too high. Quite incredible. Yep, those are runes. Strangely enough, more sophisticated. Proto Norse runes. Proto Norse. Let's see. World of Mist. That would be Niflheim, the realm of the dead. Not Avalon exactly, but the Norse equivalent. I mean, if it's just another word for the same place, then it should be good enough, right? Can we pick these up? Yes, also, they're not affected by lighting at all while they're on the ground. That is strange, but okay. Oh, what? I thought I pressed straight forward, but that's fine. Um, yeah, I wondered about this setup here, but... Oh, oh, I did not see that niche before. Well, I guess it's a good thing that I ended up re-recording. I would have missed, or I did miss, this artifact here. It's the second one that I, that I didn't get. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't exaggerating when I said that these things were literally everywhere. Yeah, okay, that explains why those climbable things are there. Nice. Right, this is... Oh yeah, okay. The camera's still not liking me standing there. It's... It looks like Lara's collision box somehow moves into this thing as soon as she stands next to it. And now I jump forward? Yep, okay, the same thing still happens. She just teleports through that arc. That's actually up there. So she just glitched through there and ends up on this ledge. That's <laughs> extremely strange. And it, that's consistent, too. I don't know. I mean... It can't be intentional, right? Uh, you stand here, jump forward... Oh, actually, what? Hold on. Seemed consistent before. Hold on. Maybe the camera needs to be in this weird ugh, zoomed in mode. Yeah, okay, no, it's still as glitchy as before. Okay, now I jump. Oh, weird. I guess that's more like what was supposed to happen. But yeah, anyway, this teleporting to this ledge here is exactly what happened to me before, so there's that. Also, it took me an embarrassingly long time to find what to actually do here, because I saw those climbable ledges up there and I thought I was. Somehow it's supposed to climb up there, but no, there's actually just a tunnel here. Which I just didn't see at first. It, I think it's kind of hard to see, even with the light on. Yeah, and that just leads you to the other side, where... where you can then... Uh, wait, first of all, we climb out of here. Oh? Oh, another med kit. Goblet, whatever. Right, and we can then use these ledges to climb back. So that's what those ledges are for. Hmm. Actually, I wonder though. Maybe we need to escape from this place at some point. But if that's not the case, then why can I climb here in the first place? Uh, it does seem like... I mean, we can definitely drop down here. Obviously, right now we don't want to. Hmm, yeah. No idea why that's a thing we can do. Maybe it's just to allow you to go back and collect more, uh, collect any artifacts you missed. That's possible. And this is pretty much as far as I made it previously. Um, just over 10 minutes faster, too. I, I mean, no, I'm. this time is 10 minutes faster. So, that's good. I guess I'll continue playing a little bit then. And make a cut later. Yeah, so I, I wasn't sure at first whether I should just keep that original recording, because it was fine, it was... I could still be heard, but, you know, it would have been a little bit awkward, and also... 
Yeah. I felt like I spent maybe a little bit too much time just, you know, messing around. Also, cutscene. Yeah. This should just be a little bit more, you know, to the point. A little bit more streamlined. Plus the audio should hopefully be fine. Oh, hey. A Kraken. Who would have thought? Also, that thing is very conveniently situated right underneath a huge weight with spikes. I hope it's as blind as it looks. Eh. The Blind Guardian, huh? Man, I haven't listened to that band in a long time. Also, I'm not sure why I added Guardian, even though she only called it blind. But that's, that was kind of my association. Is there some kind of Kraken-like thing somewhere that's called a Guardian? Certainly not the Guardian from Oblivion. Wait, is it... wait, Oblivion? Uh, maybe just Elder Scrolls in general. Wait, not... It's not, not Elder Scrolls at all. What am I talking about? It's uh, Ultima, of course. Derp. Yeah, that one's not so particularly Kraken-like. Anyway, whatever. Um, maybe I should stop embarrassing myself anymore. Uh, gonna instead keep playing, embarrassing myself in a different way. Okay, so we have that presumably, hopefully, uh, blind Kraken monstrosity. We have tons of things to climb on. Ultimately, we'll have to detach that chain to make that thing drop right and kill it. That's, I mean, I don't know why we have to kill it in the first place. If we could just make our way around, that was probably in our way somehow, in some way. I mean, it's in front of something. Maybe, maybe the door that we need to use is right behind it. That's it could be, I guess. Hmm. It looks like I might be able to just drop down, although that's maybe a little bit too far. Let's stay up here first, as long as we can. We can definitely climb around here, make it to the other side, or cross those ledges. Hmm. Okay. I mean, dropping down is always easy, right? So let's stay as far up as we can, as long as we can. Because climbing up is definitely going to be more difficult than getting down. Okay, here we could slide quite easily. But we can also make it across here. Okay. There are probably good reasons to be downstairs too, but... For now, we can actually do some climbing on these things. Hmm, the question is, do we need to remove that tentacle first? Is that gonna get in our way? Well, one way to find out. Okay. Hmm. Well, I mean, if it's blind, it should be fine so long as we don't touch it, right? When time slows down, act quickly to survive. Okay. Uh, what? She just disappeared there for a second. That's cool. Uh, okay. Oh! She was not fine. I uh, didn't know what the game expected me to do. I thought that the part I was standing on was not going to fall, but I guess the fact that the bolt time was still active should have given away that I was supposed to do something else. Uh, can you please climb here? No. Can you not climb that ledge? Yeah, she does this weird thing where she just attaches to a wall and she can actually wall jump. I haven't had to do that yet. It also seems kind of silly, because it's definitely not something normal humans can do, but... Well, I don't know, maybe I should only speak for myself. Hi there, Tentacle. How did you notice me there, if you're blind? Maybe I need to... Nope. Walking slowly doesn't seem to prevent it from noticing me. Well. Uh, just kick these ancient bases, thank you. And quite reliably, there is one, there's been one artifact per group of bases so far. I'm not sure what happened there. What well, as I said, this, these bits of glitchy movement and, you know, weird controls are definitely part of the series. Definitely what I've come to expect at this point. It's kind of endearing, you know. 
most of the time. Of course, it can be kind of frustrating when it's actually when it actually causes you to, you know, miss a jump that you should have made easily. That kind of thing, and that is going to happen, absolutely. But it's not. Okay. Oh, I had to aim for that ledge specifically. Oh, okay. Or I can just swim around. Mm. Oh, is that an artifact? I guess so. Couldn't really see it. Wait. Um, yes, 10 out of 26. Okay. Maybe the levels aren't as gigantic as I first thought, because these rings are really just so abundant, but... I mean, that's nice. I like getting rewarded. Um, excuse me? She really doesn't want to climb these, huh? Oh, no. She totally does. All right. Okay. Another place to climb. Hmm. Of course, I wonder what's going to happen over th on the other side now that I've... that the thing destroyed part of that platform. I wonder if that was just a trap, or if I can actually do something there. Okay. This is clearly part of a greater mechanism. Oh, we can move that outward? Why do we want to do that? That seems pretty final. Oh, actually that uh, moved the wheel into position, the, the gear into position for the mechanism to work in the first place. I thought we moved it away so that it detached from the others, but no. I guess that was necessary then. Hello. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I'm glad or sad that it doesn't react to this at all. <laughs> it's kind of kind of funny though, isn't it? Yeah. Take that. Or not. Hmm. I mean, I guess I'm gonna see if I can do whatever the game wants me to do in this room. Even if I'm not quite done exploring the entire area. I hope it's not gonna prevent me from reaching any places, basically. Turn to pillar tops to perch on them, yes. We know that mechanic, of course. Um. Okay, so maybe pulling out that gear was all I needed to do. Hmm. I'm not sure why this hurt him. Okay, so we need to detach both sides of that platform, I guess. Wait, but that probably prevents me from reaching that. Hmm. Maybe there's another way around. Uh, that might be. Okay. Yeah, so it looks like the platform was locked in place, or is still locked in place by one of those bridges. And we, we also have to... Oh, maybe that's all we need to do, actually. Maybe it, we just need to move both bridges out of the way and then pull that switch and that's gonna make it drop. Makes you really wonder why this mechanism was ever built. Which looks like it serves the sole purpose of crushing something that's underneath the platform. I mean, they couldn't have planned for the Kraken to just sit there. Or maybe they could, who knows. Obviously, this is... Oh, okay, that's just... Yeah. Just blocked. I see. Can we actually climb these things here? Hmm. Wait, can I jump back? Wall jump? I mean, the camera did not like that one bit, but... You can actually just chain wall jumps, which is absolutely crazy. Well, Apparently this was just for another artifact. What is that? Why is that so glowy? Who knows? I see any artifacts from here. They're really tiny and not very not very shiny compared to the previous game, so yeah. 
I certainly couldn't see anything. Also, it's unfortunate that that dealt damage. Oh, we could have dropped down here. Okay, well, my bad then. Pull? Uh, I cannot pull, so... I guess it's for swinging? No, it couldn't be. Hmm. What is that for? Nope. Oh, she actually... She shakes her head. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Fair enough. Um, there's that ledge. Can we reach the middle platform at all? I suppose we never really need to be on it. Hmm. What is the point, though? Maybe we can climb... Uh, okay. Hold on. Oh! Or we can just climb to this thing directly. And then here. What is that ring about, then? I mean, you can't really swing from it. There's absolutely no room for anything. Weird. Uh, do I want to jump backwards or sideways? I guess backwards works just fine. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's strange. Nope. Unless maybe we need to... No, I don't know. I was thinking maybe detach the platform, then we can stand on here and make the thing swing by pulling? But would that make any sense? I don't know. I guess I'll keep going with the more obvious path for now and see if that does what I need it to. Okay, there's another tentacle down there. Another mechanism here. The lever is right here. I guess a tentacle is in the way in this case? That looked painful, or sounded painful. Hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh! Did it actually react? Oh! Wait, I'm on the wrong side? No, no, I can... I can't even stand on it, that's cool. I suppose. Okay, this could just pull off the way. Careful there. The rocks gonna despawn or oh. No they don't. Okay, interesting. Welp. Uh so we should just be able to climb up now and do uh, and pull the lever and detach the platform completely. Is that all that I need to do here though? In this giant, complicated room? Maybe. Um, oh, a slide. Okay. Oh, wait. Misinterpreted. No! Surprised I didn't take damage there. I saw the swinging pool just after I jumped. So. Obviously, I need to slide down here and jump to that thing. Okay. Levers on this side. So now that moves. Yep. And that thing is now free. And the Kraken doesn't suspect a thing. And I feel kind of bad about this, though. It hasn't really tried attacking me actively yet. I mean, I guess it's. Tried whipping me with, with its tentacles a couple of times, but, you know, only because I got too close. Oh well. Okay, I was thinking that we might pull it up first. Maybe there's another thing we have to do to actually make it drop, then? Looks like there is a... Hmm. Okay, never mind. Well, it looks like there is an upper level that we haven't even been to. And we 
we haven't really been to that side either. Well, or to most of the lower section of the level. Well, anyway, uh, okay, we just aim for this with the correct weapon. And that's that, really. Oh, wait, the other side too? Okay, they're conveniently both broken. Sure, of course they are. Oh boy, oh, that was painful. I'm so sorry, man. You're, you were in the way. Wrong time, wrong place. Oh man. Oh no. Yep, it was totally blocking the, the exit door. I mean... Uh, also, it's completely gone. Where is the gigantic body? Is it underwater? Hmm. Okay, you know what? Uh, this has been... A decent length for an episode, and I think there's... The, well, the level might actually end as soon as we move through that gigantic portal. Maybe all the remaining artifacts are all hidden in this giant room. It certainly looks like there's places like up there that I haven't been to. And definitely places yeah, on both sides downstairs and in the water where I haven't looked around at all. So, um, but we'll see. Um, I'm just going to call it an episode here. Made it a lot further than uh, on that first scrapped recording, so that's cool. Um, yeah, as always, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this so far, because uh, I, I know I have. I'm definitely looking forward to more of this. Um, yeah, really good first impression on my part. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button, leave me a comment, and I shall see you real soon. Bye-bye.